Um, premarital sex is engaging in sexual activities when you're not yet married or who you're not married to, legally married to. Premarital sex, I would say, it's, the, it's a sexual activity before marriage. Um, an activity that young people engage in before marriage. It's pre, then marital, that's before marriage, sex before marriage. Is the engagement of sexual intercourse that subsists between unmarried persons. It could be same gender, it could be different genders. And I want to say that God who created man and even sexuality, unlike animals, there are restrictions to sexuality for human beings. And that restrictions, I would like to talk more on, the, on two sides of those restrictions. Number one, premarital sex, and the second side is extramarital sex. And while I've talked a little on premarital sex, let me also remind us that extramarital sex has to do with that sex that engages married couples outside their holy, their, their legally established home. First of all, I, I really want to talk about sex. Um, why do people engage in sex, or why is sex meant for married people? You know, I will talk of procreation. The essence of sex is procreation, bond, and pleasure. So, but then, premarital sex, people engage in it mostly because of the thought, which is the list in the list I just uh, mentioned now. That's pleasure. Uh, I would say some people engage in it for fun. I would say some people engage in it to satisfy their sexual desires at that time. I'm talking about rapists. I would also say people engage in it um, because of depression. That's why you hear people say, ah, oh, I had sex with my ex because I want to pain my present boyfriend or something like that. So I think that's why. An average person thinks whatever the masses do, he should do. An average person thinks majority carries the vote. And it is obvious that in our age, majority of our youth, majority, engage in premarital sex? Well, the society have made it common in the sense that every, everything you're doing now, you go on social media, they're talking about it, dance move, everything, like everything is so normal. You have this one corner dance, you hear of on social media posted, like they post things that relate to it, that you know that, okay, this is what you're talking about. Yeah, it's common because, um, you know, we live in a generation, uh, over time, um, we are coming to a generation whereby um, youths, they want to know. We, um, we want to adventure, we want to want to find out things for ourselves. We no longer want to be told how things run, you know, because over time, there have been a bridge between the, the morals or in the family line. So we, we need to we want to venture, find out things for ourselves because uh, our, an average parent is busy, goes to work very early, comes back home late. So we want to venture into things. We want to know what what, what does mom, what, why is this secret? What, why is mom and dad not talking about this? So let's know what it's like. So that's why most people venture into it. The society is making it look like it's normal. So if you're not doing it, you're abnormal. That's how the society is making it look like. Like my dad would say, what is wrong can never be right. There's no way you want to paint it. Generally, it's, it's an act which is definitely not right. An open and free food may be dangerous. Why do I say so? You ask majority of the dead rats what killed you. Some of them will tell you that. I ate an open food which was free and it led me to my early grave. And that is what is going on inability to wait and pay the bride price and legally gain ownership to enjoy sex in marriage. Someone just has to be careful who you're with 
and you know that anybody you're with, especially for the ladies, the person tends to um, leave something in you that you can't just walk away from the person. So you don't know who, you, who you're going to be with. So it's better to be on the safe side. Just know who you're dealing with, who you're having premarital sex with. I would, I th from my own opinion, I think it is, it is more better or cool to get married before you know your spouse sexually. Anybody that engages in, in premarital sex, if pregnancy comes up, you see them running away, you see them talking about abortion, or the guy leaving, running away from the girl, or the girl, uh, or, or the parents forcing the girl and all that to get married to the guy and all that. Then if you talk of bonding, you see that most of the times um, they don't um, bond. The, the guy just wants to do it for the pleasure. So which is the least on the list. So I will really tell them, I will really advise against it because it raises a lot of things. Unwanted pregnancy, um, we talk of unwanted pregnancy, we talk of um, 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 sexually transmitted diseases, we talk of depression. Yeah, we talk of depression. Depression could be in the, in the, in the, in the um, side of the lady whereby the guy does this and he's like a hit and run driver. He's done with it and he leaves. And the guy's like, I, I thought you loved me. I thought we had this feeling and we engaged in this, but we, you're not forthcoming and all that. So I really advise people, premarital, premarital sex is not for, it's not for us now. It's not for us. We, they are, they are, there's time for everything. The, the time now is not the time to engage in premarital sex because it has a way of affecting our thinking. Yeah, it has a way of affecting our thinking because you're, you're busy thinking of how you're going to do this to the girl, how you do that to that girl and, and, all, that and all that. So you, you shift focus of your life goals. So I would really urge them um, to be focused. This you, you need to abstain from premarital sex. I, I I found that that it's there is no really much. I wouldn't say no fun fun there, but hey, one could wait. One could wait definitely. See, really, you're going to get married and you have your wife all to yourself every day. You could have her every day. You could even tell her, honey, I don't want you to go to work today. I want us to just stay at home and just have fun. So why, why decide to um, do it now when you're meant to build your future, you're meant to build your future? Uh, is, are, are you going to bring out children that you'll not be able to take care of, um, barrel being that you've not been able to build up your future? So really, uh, I would... I would say that if you're focused on your goal where you're going to, if you know where you're going to, you're focused on it, then parental sex is not something that you should venture. It should not even cut across you. Yes, the temptation might come, um, your feelings might come, but then a man that is focused, you know how to divert those feelings. Why are we rushing after free and open things today? That you see an open breast does not mean you touch, does not mean you run after. Ability to take what is yours may not kill you any. It's, it's more like, primarily sex is like the fun that comes with much penalty or much um, problems than the fun in it. So when you think of it, you should think of the consequences that could follow. And um, it, gives, uh, it gives you a kind of bad name in the sense that everybody's like, okay, this guy is a player. Or when you bring somebody, they're like, oh, she's just one of those, those girls he brings around. They don't, they don't see you as a special person. And then they're like, this girl is just somehow, she's just like, you know, moving from one pe person to another. So it has so many negative impact if you're engaging in it. Advantages, that's funny. I don't really know, is there an advantage to that? To premarital sex, advantage, advantage. Okay, I would say, okay, so like some, we're Africans and some parents would say, okay, we don't know if this girl could give birth to a child, so why don't you impregnate her before, before marriage? But the truth stands that the Christianity came into Africa and we got to know of supreme being which is God and I grew up knowing that God gives children so I don't think there is an advantage to that trust me it doesn't make us it doesn't add anything to us it doesn't remove anything to us we expect so much from it but we may end up not getting it so it doesn't mean anything to us so um, it doesn't have anything in the sense that anybody that will love you will love you for who you are the person will love you for 
for how you present yourself and not because the person is loving you because you're good on this particular side, maybe you're good on bed or something like that. Okay, disadvantages to premarital sex. Uh, there are a whole lot of them, a whole lot of them, because uh, first I would say it could lead to unwanted pregnancy. That's, everybody knows that. You could say, okay, it's just a fling and afterwards she's pregnant and what happens? And these in time have caused so many issues because you see a, a young lady who is, uh, who's got a bright future that wants to go to school and all of that. But when that happens, trust me, her, it, it changes her whole her personality entirely because that's for that, because it affects your, 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 your academics. Engagement in premarital sex can abort a destiny, can charter a man on course. So for the lady, um, it's, uh, it's an emotional touch on most of them because it's just from, uh, of course, you, you just know that um, Tom is doing that to her tomorrow, John does it tomorrow, um, Samson does it tomorrow, Solomon does it to her. So it's something that, uh, so she, she will lose focus of, her, of track. She will lose focus, she won't be able to think straight, and she'll be emotionally down because, of course, these days the guy comes in and tells you, I love you, just to, uh, to get through you, and when he gets through, he goes to the next person. So for the guys, um, it, it cuts across their savings because nowadays you have to take the girl down, down to a mall to be able to get her, your attention to her, uh, her attention to you. So it cuts across your savings, then it cuts across time, your time to do notable things, time to do important things, because across your time to do important things, so you just see them wasting their time thinking of how, to, how do I get this person, and then it comes across them discussing um, things that don't matter. They, their circle of discussion cuts across things that don't really matter. So it cuts across their intellects too. Their intellect, they are not focused on what they are meant to be doing at the right time, so it cuts across their intellects too. Another effect, some, some ladies would want to like, oh, let me let me use the word now, flush it out, or let me abort the child, there could be complications. And that could affect the, the, the lady. Now, it can make someone different in the sense that your emotional welfare, your mental health can be challenged. What is wrong can never be right. It's, to wait is still the best option. Welcome back to Emotions. My name is Omenessa. So we have been talking about premarital sex and intercourse and its disadvantages. There are so many of them. The hormone that is in a woman when this dance is going on, oxytocin, and the hormone that comes out in a man, vasopressin, right? These hormones are meant for intimacy. They are meant for bonding. They are meant for attachment. They are meant to protect your partner, you understand? So can you just imagine being permeated, permeated by these hormones for the wrong person? So now you are bonding with the wrong person. You're now with somebody who you're not gonna spend the rest of your life with. And even if it's somebody who you're gonna spend the rest of your life with, marriage is totally different, completely different from a relationship. The dynamics are different, the demands are different, and the supply is different you understand so you don't want to you know take a chance on that oh yes we are going to get married eh? and we are going to get married yeah but you also don't have enough information because you don't have those dynamics yet that could compensate and let me tell you something dancing intercourse is not it will not compensate <laughs> for the other dynamics have you ever been that kind of person where you look at the relationship and you say ah he's a liar She's a cheat. And you have this long list. And then you end it with, ah, man. But they are good in bed. Or they sabi dance. You understand? For the love of God, if you're honest with yourself, are you actually going to marry somebody because they are good in bed? Are you going to, 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 to get married with somebody because of five minutes or 40 minutes or, or however? No. You, you, you can't bargain your whole lifetime 
on something that is so fickle yet important, but really not as pivotal as the other dynamics. So another thing with having premarital intercourse, you could get yourself in a situation where the woman is pregnant. She, that was not her plan. She wanted to go to school, you know, but because of the attraction, it happened. And now a baby is here. So she's forced to abort, which now she has now put herself in a place of murder. Or she's forced to suck it up. But you know what? Single mothers and single fathers and all of that, even though that child is a blessing, man. Kai, it's an interruption. No? The thing just came from nowhere. It has altered everything. Completely dabarooed everything. Everything is just all over the place. You understand? So, I mean, uh, l let us be for real. Eh? You know, just, 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 just don't. Uh, don't. Uh, have self-control. Wait until that marriage. Because you see, if you're pregnant in marriage, uh -uh, everybody will be happy for you now. There will be no shame. Shame does not come with that because there is a protection. There is a guard. There is a cage. There is a hedge. There is a roof. There is something. You understand? But... To now, you know, and let me speak to people. Hmm. Because I know people who purposely go out to do this thing so that they can have children. They will holla if you're honest with yourself. They will holla is too much. You cannot use a baby to hook a man. No. Let me just tell you, you cannot use a baby to hook a person. You cannot. Because, and God help you too, that that person has money. They will just use money to solve everything. You will still be lonely. You will still be rejected. You will still be abandoned. So please, the premarital intercourse is not necessary. Wait. So that you do not jump from one thing to another. So because of five minutes now, you have become a murderer. You are aborting all over the place. And the day now that you want to have a child, ah, there will be a problem. There will be complications. One thing begets another. Let's practice self-control. So that we are not having attachment to people that we know that we don't want to spend the rest of our lives with. Intercourse is like um, a cello tape. You understand? It's like a cello tape. And those hormones are the adhesive to the cello tape. So you're putting it on your body, right? And then you rip it off your skin. That means that you guys break up or you have a misunderstanding or whatever. Now you have to move on. Well, you really, really cannot move on or use the same cello tape with somebody else because it's going to be weaker because there are hairs behind that cello tape. So you've taken a part of that person with you. You've taken their disappointments. You've taken their shame. You've taken their wahala. You've taken their drama. You've taken their energy. That's why you would notice that whenever you break up with somebody, it kind of takes you a while to get yourself back. It takes you a while to recuperate because what a relationship does is it has taken from you. So that's why a lot of people don't even get out of the relationship because they don't want to go through that whole process. So if, so if there is a possibility that that could happen, then why do we constantly keep doing this to ourselves? Now, what about the people who have been completely seared? Mm -hmm. Those are the people who don't have a conscience anymore. These are the people who have been doing it and doing it and doing it with so many different people. These are people who are like on the streets or like people who have been raped or you understand. They don't really, really feel anything anymore they don't feel any remorse they don't feel shame they don't feel anything they're not they, like they don't feel anything at all what happens like how do you replace the rubber band well when you stop feeding something it will die that's just the god honest truth if you want to replace something that thing has to be completely eradicated and then you replace you cannot it's like pouring new wine into old skin you can't it's burst you can't do that Okay, there'll be an explosion. So you're going to have to get rid, rid of that habit, rid of that personality, and rid of the root that even puts you there in the first place. Is it loneliness? Is it frustration? Is it poverty? Whatever even puts you in that place in the first place, you have to get that aspect of your life healed first. And then you now eradicate that habit of intercourse with somebody who is not your spouse. And then you can now replace it with being chased. You now replace it because you see, like those hormones, the less you use them, the less bonding, of course. Now, some of you who are already married, you say, uh -huh, but we do it all the time and whatever. And my husband still doesn't pro uh, uh, pro protect me. Does that mean that his hormones are not working well? No, it just means that there are other factors. There are other dynamics, as I said, to marriage. It's not just intercourse. 
You understand? But having intercourse outside of marriage is really, really setting yourself up. It is like opening, it's like leaving your house unlocked. You know, somebody has, anybody can just walk in, see everything about you, know where your checkbook is, know what your passwords are, know where you hide this, know where you hide that. They know your, 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 your secrets. They know everything about you. And then now they just walk out with no commitment. Why would you put yourself through that? Why? It's not wise. You want to be in a relationship where the person values you. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say this. If you are in a relationship where you tell the person, hey, no intercourse before marriage and the person puts pressure on you, he doesn't love you. She doesn't love you. Because if this person disregards your opinion at this time, hmm, when you get married, they will not take anything that is coming out of your mouth. They will not take it seriously at all. Anybody who cannot respect the measures that you take to, to protect yourself, they will not protect you and they will not respect you. It's as easy as ABC. I'm telling you, it is that simple. So magic is not going to take place after somebody has now seen you. They have seen everything about you. They know everything about you. They have seen your home. They know where you hide your money. They know everything about you. They know you. You understand? You don't have mouth anymore now. You can't uh, defend yourself anymore. Intercourse outside of marriage is very, very dangerous because you are bonding and you're going to have an attachment with something that may or may not be. With something that may or may not be. Why would you take a chance like that? Why on earth will you jump off a cliff when you're not sure of a smooth landing? Why? Cement is cement. You will fall and you will crash and you will die. So, how do we stop these habits? Like I said, you stop watering it. Just stop it. Gain your satisfaction. Gain your love. Because a lot of people do all of this. Because they feel a connection. They want that connection. They want the, ch the touch. They want the romance. They want the validation. They, you know, want the connectivity. That's what they want. Why don't you connect with yourself? And no, I am not talking about doing that with yourself. That's not what I mean. But if you start practicing more on your career, more on your assignment on earth, you would notice that your need... To have such connectivity in that manner will reduce greatly. And then when you get married, you don't have to be scared of that form of vulnerability. But don't put yourself in that position. It is very, very toxic for you. It's toxic for the other person as well. We've been talking about premarital intercourse. It is enjoyable. It is... It is meant for connectivity, but because of how powerful it is, it would be like giving your child a car to drive before he's of age, you know, or your child has a bank account and they have access to all this money. They will squander it. They don't know what to do with it. You understand? They don't know what to do with it. It is coming before time. Everything in life has a time frame. Everything in life has a timing so we should put a cap on these things. We should really, really love ourselves enough. Loving ourselves enough to protect ourselves, to protect our hearts and not gamble with our heart. Because premarital intercourse is, is gambling with your heart. Really, because you don't know the end results. Now, I'm not saying that there are some people who do it and it doesn't work for them. Bravo. But you don't know if you're going to be that person. You're going to have to get married first to know, right? See? You don't know that yet. So you have to protect yourself. You don't want your spouse suspecting you because you didn't um, have self-control before you got married. So now he or she thinks that you don't have self-control. And whenever he or she is not around, that's what you're doing. You don't want to encourage e extramarital affairs. You don't, you know, you don't want to put yourself in that position you don't want your spouse to be suspicious you don't also want your satisfaction to dwindle you know because like you've already known each other now so when you get married there is nothing else to know now 
you know, it becomes boring. Like you've pretty much done everything that there is to do. You know, you have been inventive, you have been adventurous. So, I mean, now you've entered the, into the marriage, there is nothing else to do, you know, and you could find yourself in a position um, where you just feel like something is lacking. The rent is being paid, food is provided, everything is there. You have children, there's love, you know, but mm, there's just something that's, there's just something that's missing. Hey, that's my opinion. Emotions is not here to, to, to encroach on your opinions. I'm just here to suggest that premarital intercourse is a no-go. Just don't do it, okay? Wait for that right person. Wait for that right one because intercourse too has a way of blurring your vision. Even to people who are married, once you use that to solve a problem, the problem is over now. Once you use that to solve a fight, there is no solving, you know, there is no solution. You just assume that the problem has been solved. That's how powerful it is. So, I mean, you don't want to put yourself in subjection to such power at the wrong time and with the wrong person. Okay, I'm going to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. jump off a cliff just knowing that you will not crash. If you're not in control of your emotions, your emotions will be in control of you. For anyone who values financial security and ultimately desires financial freedom, creating at least one additional stream is no longer a luxury, it has become a necessity. Diversifying your income stream is crucial to protect yourself and your family against the unavoidable ups and downs of economic and industry cycles. Because of the financial risk that come from relying on one source of income, such as a job or a business, consider creating at least one or more additional streams to generate cash flow. The benefits of having multiple streams of income include peace of mind because you know there will always be money to spend. Also, you will earn much more than you currently earn from your day's job. Therefore, you will live bigger and better. Your additional income streams can be active, passive or a combination of the two. Some may pay you for doing something that you love, active, while others can provide income for you without having to do much of anything at all, passive. Here are multiple streams of income opportunities. Selling information in hard book formats, selling information in the form of downloadable ebooks, making money from referral opportunities, training classes, consulting opportunities, dealership opportunities, design opportunities, manufacturing opportunities, investment opportunities. The list is definitely not exhaustible. To create wealth, you must make investment that will create dependable streams of income flows, independent of your main source of income. The time to act is now. Begin implementing this practice and before you know it, within months, you can be enjoying the benefits and the financial security and freedom that comes from having multiple streams of income. You can. Hello, good morning, and welcome to the News at 10 on the network service of the NTA. Reaching you live from Abuja, I'm Chumubi Walter Naji. And I'm Elizabeth Omori. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, the headlines. President Muhammad Buhari sent delegation to support Nigeria's candidate, Professor Tijani Muhammad Bande, for President of the United Nations General Assembly. Muslim faithful enjoined to look out for the new moon of Shawwal today, 29th day of Ramadan.
Our correspondent examines the significance of zakatul fitri in Islam. Unlike other one, you can give to other people who are not Muslim, but zakatul fitri is meant for the poor. Plus, Central Bank of Nigeria reiterates readiness to sustain growth momentum in the nation's economy. to have you with us and as we go into the news former head of state general abdul salam Bakr has given reasons for his absence at the 2019 presidential inauguration ceremony in abuja this was while speaking to NT news after an audience with president muhammad buhari on the margins of the just concluded summit of the oic in Makkah, kingdom of saudi arabia state house correspondent adam Sambo reports President Muhammad Buhari received the former head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, at the Royal Guest Palace in the holy city of Mecca. Their meeting was held behind closed doors for about 30 minutes, but details were not made public. General Abdul Salami Abubakar, who chairs the National Peace Committee that worked towards peaceful polls in Nigeria, was not at the Eagle Square in Abuja when President Muhammad Buhari was inaugurated for a second term of office. NTN, you sought to know why. You have seen me where I am. I left Nigeria in the middle of Ramadan for my Umrah, and that's why I was not able to come. And uh, the president is aware of my absence. So, so what, having been here, what have you been praying for Nigeria? Uh, certainly we have been praying for peace, for our economy to uh, return, and so that we can have peace and have a country that anybody, everybody can be pleased with. So what do you wish President Muhammad Bari in the next level? Well, I wish him well, and I want him to, that, like the slogan said, take Nigeria to a higher level of prosperity, of security, and of democratic actions. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari is back in Abuja after the 14th summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He was received on arrival at the NMD Aziko International Airport, Abuja, by his Chief of Staff, Abba Kari, Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, the Permanent Secretary, FCT, Mr. Chinyaka Oha, and other senior government officials. In Abuja, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And the head of election for president of the United Nations General Assembly scheduled to hold in New York June 4, 2019, President Muhammad Buhari has sent a federal government delegation to support Nigeria's candidate, Professor Tijani Muhammad Bande. And Bande, who is permanent representative of Nigeria to UN, will become the second Nigerian to be elected president of ANGA after Major General Joseph Nanvin Garba, who held the position between 1989 and 1990. In a statement issued by a senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity, Garba Shehu, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, will lead the delegation, which includes Director General of National Intelligence Agency, Executive Secretary of the Petroleum Technology Development Fund, and senior special assistant to the president, media and publicity. President Buhari is confident that Nigeria's imminent presidency of the 74th session of the UN General Assembly Assembly will provide a unique opportunity to accentuate Nigeria's voice on political, social, economic and environmental challenges facing the world, adding that Nigeria will build on progress achieved under Ecuador's presidency of 73rd Assembly led by Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garcia to further promote key themes that President Buhari has championed in the global stage since 2015, which include climate change, terrorism and violent extremism, as well as establishing functional anti-corruption mechanisms to assist countries like Nigeria recover and repatriate stolen funds. The delegation has left since June 2nd. And now to other matters, Muslims have been told to look out for the new moon of Shawwal, 1440 after Hijra. Today, Monday, 
Today, Monday 29th of Ramadan, equivalent to 3rd of June 2019. A statement signed by Professor Sambo Wali Junaidu, the Chairman Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs, Sultanate Council Sokoto says the sighting should be reported to the nearest district or village head for onward communication to the Sultan. The sighting of the new moon can be reported through the following numbers 08037157100 or 0706714690000. You can as well call 08066303077. Still with the holy celebration as the holy month of Ramadan draws to an end, Muslims all over the world are enjoined to pay zakat al fetri as a religious obligation. In this special report, correspondent Abdul Salam Jabir explores the significance of zakat al fitri in Islam in adherence by Muslim faithful. Is charity taken to the poor few days before the end of fasting? In the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. In the Hadith also, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, made it an obligation for every able Muslim to pay zakat to fitri before going to the Eid prayer. How significant is zakat to fitri and how much is stipulated in Islam to be given? As a Muslim, we are expected to give zakat to fitr to use the mudu, the, the measurement of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the skill that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used. When you go to the market, you get the the the, uh, the skill, the measurement that you can use to uh, to give out the zakat al fitr. And this uh, uh, the measurement you just measure four. If it is that small one, you measure four per one person. As the head of the family, he is the one that is expected to give out zakat to fitr on his behalf and on behalf of all the members of the family. Zakat to fitri has a special people who are entitled to it. It has to be given to somebody who has fasted too and is a Muslim. Unlike other one, you can give to other people who are not Muslim, but zakat to fitri is meant for the poor, for the have-nots that I always describe as circumstantially poor. Then you have people who are on the way who are travelers. In order to have your fasting intact, that is why it becomes mandatory upon every fasting soul to give that alms to the needy. Also, how aware are Muslims of this religious obligation? And do they abide by it? We done it yesterday because one has to do it before Salah. If you do it, maybe two days or three days before Salah. But when you do it on Salah day, or after it has become Sadaka. The essence of Sakato Fitri is to make the people that are around you that may not have power enough in order for them to, do, to celebrate the Salah as you are doing. We are encouraged to share with our brothers and sisters who do not have as much, so that while we have in the course of a month shared in the hunger they face every day, at the end of it, let them also share in, in, in the plentiful, in the wealth, in the prosperity that we have been blessed with. Evidently, zakat al fitri is a generous practice of Islam which connects the rich with the poor, ensures no poor person goes hungry during Ramadan and more importantly, increases our iman towards Allah. In Abuja, Abdul Salam Jubril, NTA News. And joining us in the studio is Ustaz Maisuna Yahya, founder of Al Mustafia Society of Nigeria. Ustaz Maisuna will speak more on the essence and impact of zakat of fitri in the society. Sir, welcome to our studio. Thank you very much. All right, so now, what is the rationale, you know, behind the religious act that, that's uh, the zakat of fitri? Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim The creation of Almighty Allah is uh, about two or three categories. The higher ones, the middle people, and the lowest ones. Therefore, zakat of fitri is, has its rationale, uh, as it's been popularly known, to connect the poor and the rich, or the well-to-do and the less privileged ones, and particularly those who have fasted that particular year's uh, Ramadan, then you give to them 
so that they will not remain sober, having fasted for either 29 or 30 days, for them to remain the same, as happy as we are, as ecstatical as we are, as joyful as we are, and as happy as we are also. Okay. Uh, um, since you've talked about on whom this is mandatory, is this not supposed to be a lifestyle, giving and sharing? Yes, giving and sharing is part of Islam. And uh, for one who only accumulates, that person accumulates sins on himself, on himself or herself. Therefore, it is part of the ethics of Islam that when people have, they have to give. And that is why we have Zakatul Fitri, we have Zakatul Mal, another uh, farm produce of uh, giving out Zakat. Therefore, this particular one, it has to do with giving out to people, those who are less privileged, so that they can as well remain almost the same as those who have. Okay, so the, the zakat of fitra you talked about, is it uh, only to be given uh, during Ramadan or uh, is there some other time that we expect to see people, you know, uh, exchange these kinds of uh, gestures? Zakat of fitra specifically is given at the tail end of Ramadan, most especially either on the 27th of Ramadan or 28th of Ramadan or 29th of Ramadan, when Ramadan will be 29. Then if Ramadan is going to be 30, it is advisable it is given on 28. For example, as we are in today. So it is specifically for the month of Ramadan. After Ramadan, before Ramadan, there is nothing like Zakat al-Fitri because it is meant for purification. Purification. Okay, uh, now we know the significance. Now, from the religious perspective, how will this promote equality and good neighborliness in the society? Very good. A very good question. Number one. Islam recognizes the importance of neighbor, irrespective of language, religion, or ethnicity. On that note, this Zakat al Fitri helps the Muslims to come together the more. Remember, we go to the mosque five times a day, but during Ramadan, I mean at the end of Ramadan, or towards the tail end of Ramadan, you give out to people. The person you have given to, one, recognizes you. And the recipient, sorry, the giver recognizes the recipient as well as the recipient recognizes the one that has given. That's number one. Number two, under normal circumstances, when somebody has extended his goodness to you, certainly you are not supposed to endanger the life of that person. Three, you must love that person. Four, you must care for the person. And five, you must take the person as yourself compared to somebody who has and refuses to give. All right, so um, as uh, Muslims uh, are intended to uh, go and, you know, go out all out for this gesture, are there uh, final words you would like to, you know, tell them? Yes. One, every Muslim, young or old, man or woman, uh, Nigerian, Nigerians, no Nigerians, we should remember and go by the real practices of Islam, not the fake Islam some people practice. Part of it is you must love everyone. Number two, you must assume everyone is you. Number three, you must remember that whatever you think you have, others have better than you do. Number four, whatever you have, help people from it and with it. And number five, take every single person as a human being, not just as ordinary animal. All right, so for, for uh, Christians who may live among uh, Muslims, what should be their role you know, as Muslims go all out for uh, this uh, celebration? Yes, let me begin with you. You and your partner in the studio are very much invited to my house to come and celebrate with me. Meaning, I'm this sure, has to, I'm sure to we'll do. take you up on that. <laughs> Thank you very much. So you invite your neighbors, you go and visit others too, give out, and when you are given, you receive. And one good thing here is this. Even if a common peasant gives to you, you still accept it. You don't insult that. How, who are you to give me this? Meaning, we should remain happy with each other or one another, as the case may be. Okay. Now, let's bring it down to the home and communities. Uh, this particular spiritual obligation, what is the significance to us? As a Nigerian? I mean, yes. as Nigerian? As a nation. As a nation. Now we are fasting Ramadan, uh, we are still fasting Ramadan, either for 29 or 30 days. That tells you that one, you must always endure, okay. you must persevere, you must be patient. That right. should not push you to go and steal, that should not push you to go and commit fraud, that should not push you to abduct, that should not push you to kidnap, that should not push you to commit any fraud. All right, thank you very much. We've been speaking with um, Ustaz Maisuna Yahaya. He is, of course, the founder of uh, Al Mustafiya Society. 
of Nigeria. You what? Thank you for coming with us on the studio. Thank you very much. All right, so you're still watching the news at 10 on the network service of the NTA from Abuja. There will be more news just after the break to stay with us. What is fake news? A false information with no verifiable source presented as true story on media platforms with the sole intention of causing injuries, chaos, and disaffection between persons, groups, or countries. Fake news facilitates extremism. Fake news creates panic and distrust. Fake news breeds hatred. Fake news kills. Don't joke with it. Don't be in a rush. Verify your sources and facts. It is better late than fake. This message is brought to you by NTA News 24. Thank you so much for staying with us. And out to business, Central Bank of Niger reiterates readiness towards sustaining growth momentum in the nation's economy. Details of this and more on Business News. The Central Bank of Nigeria has sworn as a monetary policy agency to sustain positive growth through price and monetary stability that is conducive to growth. The Apex Bank Governor Godwin Emefile, while fielding questions from newsmen and the focus of his second tenure in office, said the CBN will tighten its efforts, especially against individuals who intend to circumvent government policies for personal gains. And doing that means that we, as the monetary authorities, will, we must fold our sleeves and see to it that we do something that will be pro-growth. And I've explained it. Explain it in the sense that I say, yes, what did you do to bring inflation down? We'll continue to do. What did you do to, uh, to continue to reduce our imports? We'll continue to do. Nigerians, Nigerian policymakers are good at developing policies. But the biggest and the bane of Nigerian po economic policy is that people circumvent the policies. Given this opportunity now, it will be, we will make it very difficult for people to circumvent economic policies. Meanwhile, a total of 557 million electronic payment transactions were recorded in selected banks across the country in first quarter 2019, valued at 34.02 trillion naira. This was revealed by the National Bureau of Statistics in a report on selected banking sector data breakdown of credits e-payment channels and staff strength data posted on its website. The report noted that Nigeria interbank settlement system instant payment transactions dominated the volume of transactions recorded within the period under review. According to the report, credit to the private sector located by the banks stood at 11.21 trillion naira as at first quarter of 2019, while the oil and gas and manufacturing sectors got credit allocation of 3.49 trillion naira and 2.23 trillion naira to record the highest credit allocation as at the period under review. Staff strength in the banking sector increased by 0.33% quarter on quarter from 104,669 in fourth quarter 2018 to 105,017 in first quarter of 2019. And that's business news. I'm... All right, let's now move over to security as troops of exercise have in Kunama Three have arrested five kidnappers near Shema village along Ruan Godia Forest in Katsina. A statement by the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Segura Musa, indicates that the operation is sequel to credible information about the criminals terrorizing the area. During pre preliminary investigation, the suspects confessed to be involved in kidnapping incidents in the general area, as well as sending their victims to their ring leaders based in a forest at Ruan Godia. Consequently, troops further searched Rowan Godia forest and destroyed bandits' kidnappers' hideout. The statement appealed to the public to provide information about suspicious movements of criminals to the nearest army or any other security agency for necessary action. 
Now, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has revoked their airline transport pilot's license of a pilot for serious violation of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Regulations. This revocation was a consequence of the pilot operating flights or non scheduled operations while his medical certificate had expired. In a statement, the General Manager of Public Affairs, Sam Adru. Aduro Boi says, during these flight operations, the pilot repeatedly exercised the privileges of his license when he was not qualified to exercise such privileges. According to him, the pilot's medical certificate commenced validity from 17th of July 2017 and expired on the 16th of January 2018, while another one was processed on the 11th of May 2018, which expired on the 10th of November 2018. However, investigation revealed that instead of the pilot revalidating his medical certificate, he conducted flight operations as a pilot in command in flagrant disregard of the Nigeria Civil Aviation Regulations. The pilot has been directed to return the invalidated license to the authorities' director of licenses of licensing within seven days of receipt of the letter of sanction. The NCAA retreats that it will continue to view very seriously any fraction of the Nigeria civil aviation regulations. And now to other stories. Displaced persons in Sokoto State who would not return to their villages due to insecurity are to be resettled at places other than where the incident occurred. Governor Aminu Wazir Tambwal said this when he visited the IDP camp at Rabat local government. Dalhatu Abdullahi has details. These are some of the internally displaced persons who have been taking refuge in Gandhi town, Rabat local government, for 11 months now. Attacks by bandits forced them to flee 11 villages of the district that share border with Danfara state. Records show that over 100 persons were killed in different bandits' attacks in the affected villages. Malam Lawal Muhammad is the village head of Tabani, one of the villages worst hit by the bandits. He appealed to the state government to see the possibility of establishing another settlement for his subjects. Governor Tambual was at the IDP camp to perform his first function in his second term as the governor of Sakuta State. The event is the flag off of the distribution of food items and clothing to the displaced persons to enable them to celebrate the forthcoming Eid al-Fitr with ease. The government of Sokoto State is willing and ready to resettle the people affected by banditry anywhere they are in Sokoto State to any settlement they are more comfortable with other than their existing villages where they have had these instances. Items distributed include bundles of clothing materials for males and females, 600 bags of rice, 50 bags each of millet and sorghum, 20 bags each of sugar and salt, 1 million naira, and 5 big oxes to celebrate the Eid al-Fitr. As part of activities marking his inauguration, Governor Amin Waziri Tambol granted pardon to 20 inmates from Sokoto Central Prison. In Sokoto, Dalat Abdullahi, ANTA News. Now, in order to effectively stamp out corruption in the society, there is a need for proper sensitization, especially in the public service, on its implications in the system. Director General of National Office for Technology Acquisition and Promotion, Dan Azumi Mohamed Ibrahim, said this as the office collaborates with the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission to help mobilize staff in curbing corruption. Justin Bem Oim reports. This collaboration is coming on the heels of the recognition that the greatest percentage of corruption is in the public service. The NOTAP Anti-Corruption and Transparency Unit is now coming with specific objectives of convincing workers to make them understand and appreciate the import of corruption as it affects the development of any society, beginning from the office. Um, though the unit had been in existence for some time, but it needed to be officially inaugurated. That is why we invited the ICPC to come and inaugurate the unit. So if any system wants to develop, if we have a canker worm like corruption, we have to try to bring it to the barest minimum so that collectively we will move our nation forward. That sensitization exercise is very important. 
This development, the Director General says, will have a multiplier effect on the general society with a view that sensitization and consciousness remains a major weapon to use and fight corruption. Justin Bemuni, NTA News. All right, we'll now pause for another commercial break. Do stay with us. Advertising your goods and services on the right channel gives you an edge over your competitors. NTA News 24 has all the platforms for your target audience. The station is on DSTV Channel 419, Go TV Channel 46, Star Times Channel 101, and Free TV Channel 703. With our digital format and wide range, we can reach your customers in next to no time. We are eager to promote your business, goods, and services. So, partner with us for a very rewarding business experience. For more information, Please call Henry on 0803-379-0884 or visit our office at NTA Headquarters, Area 11, Gatki Abuja. NTA News 24. News and more news. Imagine a station where you access information. Think of a station that creates awareness for national development. Imagine a station that prepares you for a bright and greater future. A station for all ages. Documentaries, classroom and television, events coverage, children's programs and variety shows. Always stay tuned to NTA Knowledge on the Star Times platform, Channel 359. For partnership, sponsorship and advert placements, Contact us on NTA Knowledge. NTA Knowledge, led to growing horizon. Information is power. Everyone wants power. So feel powerful with the NTA News mobile app, the one-stop information center. Real news at your fingertip. Be the first to report by uploading first-hand information on the U Report link. And be the first to know by simply clicking on any of the links on the sidebar for headlines, domestic and foreign news, economy, security, politics, sports, and more. Stream live on your smartphone and tablets and stay connected. It's pretty easy. Simply download NTA News app from your Google Play Store and you're good to go. NTA News mobile app. Your access to real-time information. 